Hi Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Got a really big and important video for you today, something a little different. And in this troubleshooting drill, we're going to be doing what we often do in the real world. We're going to be walking into a situation that already exists and we've got to come up with some basic troubleshooting, decide where we're going to start. And also, I do have a multiple choice exam question for you tied into this. So something a little different today that I know you'll enjoy, and especially these real world troubleshooting tips. Because it's been my experience over the years, and believe me, if you're just starting with networking, I know what that's like, and you're just trying to take all of this in. But the real test of a network admin is the ability to troubleshoot. Because what you're doing then is taking the theory that you've learned, and I hate it when people bash theory, because you know, hey, you got into the theory of networking in order to work with the reality of networking. But you know, to troubleshoot it, you've really got to be able to analyze what's going on, use some basic tools, and gather that information. Because where people may give you inaccurate information when you go troubleshooting on occasion, uh, the routers tend not to lie. So let's go ahead and get to that live equipment right now. And the scenario I've got for you, I'm just going to tell you about it. Because another thing you have to get used to in real world, tr real world troubleshooting is the fact that they're not going to have a bunch of nice, neat pictures waiting for you when you go in. Uh, you know, again, gathering the accurate information, the right information, is a big test of our abilities. Now, what we're being told here is that Router 3, the one we're actually on now, cannot communicate with a network that we have over on Router 2. And actually, I've set up a single host over there. You see the IP route command. Go ahead and eyeball that, because uh, that could be the problem. And routers 2 and 3 are also our spoke routers. Router 1 is our hub. That's 172.12.123.1. And as we know, any spoke-to-spoke -spoke traffic is going to have to go through the hub. So what's the very first thing you would do if you walked into this situation and they're saying, hey, we can't send any data to this particular address, 2222? What would you do? Very first thing you're going to do most likely is send a ping just to get basic information about what's going on. And let me undo any debugs we've got there. And let's go ahead and send a ping to that address. Now this returns a little odd because with pings we are so used to getting you know five of one character. Five exclamation points, good. Five timeout periods, bad. And we have other characters that can show up and obviously we've had another character show up here. So we've got a couple of options here as to where to go with our troubleshooting next. And we could run a trace route, but what I would do in this situation, if I saw different ping characters come up, I would run a debug called debug IP packet. And I know I say this often in my videos, and I want to scare you away from debugs. They're a fantastic learning experience, but in production networks, you got to be careful when you can use when you use them, especially this one, because in a production network, it is going to give you a ton of information. It can actually overwhelm the router. So having said that, with debug IP packet, let's send that ping over. And something else you got to get used to in the real world. A little of this is going to be off the screen because I like to make the font as big as I can here, but I will show you everything. When you run a debug IP packet and a ping, this is what's going to happen. Your ping character is going to be all over the place. So there's our u.u.u, .u 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 and that's it. And the reason I like to run this one is to see, of course, what source and destination is of all the packets. But you've also got some good information here at the end. So we've run, we've taken a look at the config, we took a look at the IP route command. We've also run a ping, and we've run debug IP packet, excellent command to know for your NA exams, and your NPT shoot as well. Now, let's go to the question, because now we've got to come up with a solution, and of course to come up with a solution, we've got to know what the problem is to begin with. Is the problem first, that this is an illegal IP route command, so the local router has no route to 2222, is the problem that the downstream router at 172.111 does not have a route to 2222. The exit interface of 172.111 is in fact the exit interface, so routing will fail. Or D, that the exit interface on router 3 is closed. Now let me give you another little tip here, and this goes with exams, but it also helps in the real world sometimes. Because if you don't know exactly what the problem is to begin with, 
eliminating possible solutions can really help. And on an exam, I don't care how good you are at this, this happens to me just about every time I take an exam, there's always going to be one where you go, you know, I'm not quite sure. And if that happens to you, it's no sin. It happens to everybody. But here's the thing. What you can do if you are not immediately sure of the right answer is start eliminating wrong ones. And what I'll do is just take the little board they give you, and I would actually just write A, B, C, D. And I would just scratch off, you know, the ones that I know are incorrect. Don't write on the screen. They're going to get touchy about that. So if that were the case here, which of these could we absolutely eliminate? The first one you could eliminate is that this is an illegal command. Because when I showed it to you on the router, it was actually in the config. And if this were an illegal command, say you used uh, an incorrect mask or an IP address you shouldn't use here or next stop, if that IP route statement was was illegal, the router would not accept it. You know, it's going to give you that little carrot and show you where you went wrong. So that is definitely not the issue. Now, the exit interface of 172.1.1.1 is, in fact, the exit interface, so routing will fail. If that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you, uh, good, because it's really kind of a nonsensical answer. I like to put those in once in a while because sometimes you'll see one on a real exam or a practice exam that is so ridiculous you think, did I miss something? <laughs> you know, did I miss something back in class or in one of Chris's books? So uh, this is incorrect. So we've narrowed it down to these two. And the one reason that I really like to see the output of debug IP packet is you can see whether the packets are even leaving the router or not. Because what you might see here is encapsulation failed, and that most likely means the packets aren't even leaving the router to begin with. And you can see sending, so that can't be it. So actually, by the process of elimination, it looks like we're saying the downstream router at 172.1.1.1 doesn't have a route to 2222. And that is exactly the problem. And there's a great reason I wanted to show this to you. It's really easy to look at router 3's routing table, and you're sending these pings out. And if you don't run the debug, and you've never seen u.u.u before, then you're not exactly sure what's going on. And then you're looking at this table, you're going, you know, I just don't get this because I have a static route to that network. Well, you have a static route to the network on router 3. But as I described to you, and as the client would describe to you in this case, router 1's the hub. So what we could do there is go to router 1 just to verify. And you can see that there is no matching route here at all, and there's no gateway of last resort. So it's easy to look at the local router and say, well, hey, I don't see what the problem is. The local router has that route. Well, yeah, but does every downstream router know how to handle it? So the reason I'm showing you that is to, you should always concentrate on the local router, obviously, that you're working on. But don't assume that the problem is always on the local router, because as we've seen here, it's not always on the local router. Hope you enjoyed this troubleshooting drill. We're going to be doing a lot more of these uh, as time goes on. We've got some other new formats coming up as well. Hope you'll join me on our Twitter channel. I send out uh, practice exams, tutorials on that several times a day. We have some great conversations out there, as well as on YouTube and on Facebook. Thanks for watching today's video. I'm Chris Bryant, and thanks for making TBA part of your Cisco Cert certification success story.